So today we are going to talk about CSF, cerebrospinal fluid. We will see where it formations occurs after that circulations and uh, after that uh, circulations and what can be the pathology, okay? Uh, so uh, what is the clinical aspects, okay? What will happen if uh, that circulating pathway get blocked? So everything we are going to discuss. It. So first of all, what is the CSF and what is the function of CSF? So CSF is a clear colorless fluid, okay? Okay, acceptable. One thing is clear colorless fluid. Colorless fluid. Okay, it's acceptable. From where it gets synthesized? From where it gets synthesized? It from here is you can see here on diagrams. Okay, so this is the tuft of capillaries, and that is called tila choroidea. Okay, so synthesis is from coral plexus. Coral plexus. You may have doubt what is this coral plexus. This tila choroidea is a tuft of capillaries. This is the tuft of capillaries. In turn, it gives choroid plexus. So it is a part of this tila choroidea and formed by capillaries. And one thing. Where this coral plexus is present, so it is present in the lateral ventricles, third ventricle, and fourth ventricle. Right? So, in lateral ventricle, third ventricle, in the fourth ventricle. And this is the pyramidal. You know the three layers that is the DEP. Dura metal, arachinoid, and pyramid. So here is the pyramid, right? And this tila choroidea is this this layer, and here ependymal cells. This is the ependymal cells. So it's enclosed by ependymal cells, and this is the cavity of the third ventricle, and here is the cavity of the lateral ventricle. So what you have to remember that. Choroid plexus is nothing. Tila choroidea is a tuft of capillaries. In terms, give choroid plexus, right? Now, if it is a tuft of capillaries, then from which artery it arises? This thing is the very very important thing. So, in the lateral ventricles, here, and uh, one thing, circulations. Okay, I, I will tell you um, circulations shortly. Uh, from lateral ventricles. From lateral ventricles, it come into the third ventricles, and after that, it's it will come into the fourth ventricles, right? So, coral plexus. Uh, so, this CSA formation occurs in the third ventricles. Um, um, sorry, in the lateral ventricles. No, CSA formation occurs all these three: lateral ventricle, third ventricle, and the fourth ventricle. But uh, 80 to 90 percent, 80 to 90 percent of total CSF, it's forming into lateral ventricle only. Lateral ventricles, okay. So, see, this is the lateral ventricle, right? Exact shape, this is the lateral um, ventricle. Here is the third ventricle, and here is the fourth ventricle. So, from lateral ventricle, it comes into the third ventricle and it comes into the fourth ventricle, right? So, this is the circulation. 80 to 90 percent it's formed in the lateral ventricles. Okay, it doesn't mean that in third ventricle and the fourth ventricle it's not forming, it's forming. Okay, so choroid plexus also there. Okay, so this is the thing. Now, choroid plexus in the lateral ventricle, choroid plexus formations, choroid plexus from the choroidal artery, it's from the choroidal artery and in the lateral ventricles, which artery form the choroid plexus. In the third ventricle and fourth ventricle. So in the lateral ventricle, there is one artery. Okay, there is one artery that is called the anterior choroidal artery. Anterior choroidal 
artery here is the posterior choroidal artery and in the third fourth ventricle pica and aica pica and aica pica and aica so anterior choroidal artery is a branch of tell me anterior caro, um, choroidal artery is a branch of internal carotid artery internal carotid artery can you tell me the posterior choroidal artery is a branch of posterior choroidal artery is branch of what is this pica and aica pica means posterior posterior inferior cerebellar artery and here anterior inferior cerebellar artery right so this thing so this is the pica and aica one time uh, one question came in chandigarh pg okay chandigarh pg that fourth ventricle is formed by so the first option is the pica second option is the aica which is the correct answer so pica is greater than aica so whenever question is come you have to select this pica if there is third option both then go to the both otherwise this pica right so this is lateral ventricle is formed by anterior choroidal artery okay that choroid plexus is formed by and which is a branch of internal carotid artery posterior cerebellar artery posterior this is choroidal artery is a branch of posterior cerebellar artery posterior cerebellar artery right yes so this is the csf and the normal things normal csf 150 ml csf is present 150 ml csf is present out of this 30 ml present in the ventricles ventricles and remaining 120 ml it's present in the sub arachnoid space sub arachnoid space yeah. i will tell you in the circulation okay how it enter into the sub arachnoid space and in ventricles and everything okay so this this thing you have to remember it is a clear colorless fluid okay normal amount present 150 ml among them 30 ml is only in the ventricles other are in the sub arachnoid space daily production if you are seeing the daily production then it is the 500 to 600 ml per day total amount is only 150 ml but total production is this much it means what it's getting absorbed it getting absorbed right so this is the value okay which you have to remember in one book it's given like 600 to 700 ml per day in grace anatomy it's given okay but you you should consider this only in the maximum book it's given in the 500 to 600 ml per day okay so now we are going to see the circulation of the csf okay so circulation of the csf from third ventricle from lateral ventricles it enter into the third ventricles after that it enter into the fourth ventricles circulation circulation right this is the exact shape of the lateral ventricles here is the third ventricle so from lateral ventricle it's come to the third ventricle and it is communicate with the fourth ventricle so it's going into the fourth ventricle from fourth ventricle from fourth ventricle it enter into the central part of the spinal cord central part of the spinal cord downwards and again in downwards there is spinal cord right now so it's enter into the central part of the spine and after that it's enter into the it go to the um, it's go into the here one minute spinal cord and after that see here first here here is the 
lateral ventricle. Here is the lateral ventricle. From here, it's come into the third ventricle. Third ventricle. From third ventricle, it's go to the fourth ventricle. Fourth ventricle. From fourth ventricle, it will go to the central part. Central part of spinal cord. And subarachnoid space. Subarachnoid space. So this is okay. What you have to remember, you have to remember this. This is the ventral lateral ventricle and third ventricle. There is some communications that is called between two ventricles, interventricular foramen. Okay. So here is the interventricular foramen. Interventricular foramen and that is also called the interventricular foramen or foramen of Munro. From third ventricle, CSF will come into the fourth ventricle. Okay? I am drawing here one diagram. It's a See, this is the lateral ventricle. This is the lateral ventricle. Here is the third ventricle. And this is the fourth ventricle. So from lateral ventricle, this enter into the third ventricle. Okay. Through this interventricular foramen. Okay. And that is also called foramen of Munro. From third ventricles, it enter into the fourth ventricle. This is from here to here. So here. We have one thing that is called cerebral aqueduct. Cerebral aqueduct. Cerebral aqueduct of Selvian. Selvius. Cerebral aqueduct of Selvius. Through this CSF from third ventricle to enter into the fourth ventricle, right? From fourth ventricle, it's entering into the central part of the spinal cord and subarachnoid space. How is come to the subarachnoid space? This thing you have to remember, right? There is two apparatus. Okay, two apparatus here. Okay, so this uh, I want to write here. Two apparatus is there through. This the from fourth ventricle it enter into the fourth ventricle inter, enter into the subarachnoid space. Two type of apparatus. One is the median. Median aperture and second is the lateral. Lateral aperture, right? So you have to remember medial apertures and the lateral apertures. Medial apertures is called the foramen of mesenchymal. Foramen of mesenchymal. M to M. Medial, so foramen of mesenchymal. In the lateral apertures, there is foramen of Ushka. Foramen of Ushka. So in the medial apertures there is the foramen of mesenchymal, And from the lateral apertures, through the lateral apertures, foramen of the Ushka. So from lateral apertures, it's entered into the CP angle. CP angle. CP angle. Right? So what is CP angle? Angle between cerebral and the cones. Okay. Cerebral pontile angle. It will enter into here and from here 
cerebro medullary. Cerebro medullary appearance. And here is the CP angle. Okay. So this is the circulation. Okay. So now can you tell me quickly? The circulation from third ventricles, sorry, from lateral ventricles entering to the third ventricles through interventricular foramen from third to fourth ventricle. So cerebral aqueduct. If there is a cerebral aqueduct, see here. Cerebral aqueduct, this is the cerebral aqueduct, right? From fourth ventricle, it's go to the central part of the spinal cord and also to the subarachnoid space through two apparatus. One is the median, median apparatus, M means. Mesendine, see here, mesendine and lateral apertures. So from here, name is the husca, foramen of the husca. So from here, it's entered into the CP angle. Okay, this is the circulation. You have to remember. Okay, so now this is the all about the circulation. And uh, from here, it will enter into the dural venous sinus. Dural venous sinus. Okay, from here. Dural venous sinus. It will enter into the dural venous sinus through the arachnoid villi. Okay, and arachnoid villi, what is that? That is the absorbing sites. Okay, I will draw one diagram here and I will tell you everything. Okay, so this is the circulation you have to remember, right? Now, one diagram I want to tell you, I want to show you. So, let me draw one diagram that will be good to understand me. Epidural hemorrhage and other things. So, suppose this is your brain. This is your brain, right? You know DAP. DAP. This is the main jail layer. Dura mental, arachnoid, and pine from outside to inside. Outer to inside, right? So, we are going from inside to outside. So here is one layer that is called as pyometer. So see here, this layer is called what? Pyometer, right? Pyometer. Now, this is first thing. Second thing is arachinoid. Arachinoid membrane will be there. So. This is what? This is the arachnoid membrane, right? Arachnoid membrane. In arachnoid membrane, what happening? It's like this is this kind of structures present. Right? This kind of structure is present. So that is called arachinoid villi. Arachinoid villi. Arachinoid villi, right? Now, one thing you have to remember that is the in the skull, in the skull, okay, or cranial, in the skull, du dura matter, it has two layers. Two layer, while in the spinal cord, spinal cord it has only one layer, only one layer, dura mater layer. So here is two layers, right? So first meningeal layer here, this. This is the meningeal layer. Meningeal layer of dura. Meningeal layer of the dura. This okay. Now one layer is here. This is the second layer. This is the second layer of the dura matrix. Second layer of dura, right? Second layer of the dura. So, second layer of the dura, and that is called that is called 
endostelial layer here right and here here is our skull outer boundary right now what i want to tell you this is the skull and here is the meninges right okay. here is one artery here is one artery that is called middle meningeal artery yes middle meningeal artery where we have read this middle meningeal artery in the aortic ganglion okay sympathetic fibers make plexus around the middle meningeal artery and without relieving in the aortic ganglion it's applying to what which structures aortic ganglion right so parotid gland this now you tell me now you tell me if there is accident a uh, road, uh, road accident or if a person fall from heights okay if there is a fracture in the skull one thing remember this is called see this is the dura mater right so this is the dura this is the dura mater and this space is called epidural space right epidural space so if there is fracture in fracture of skull and this epidural space is affected then what will happen middle meningeal artery will rupture okay it will get damaged and there will be bleeding so what i want to tell you that uh, uh, let me write it here here epidural hemorrhage okay so i am talking about ep first hemorrhage in the hemorrhage what happen if it is epidural hemorrhage epi epidural hemorrhage so artery will be affected right so ar arterial okay and which artery middle meningeal artery it will affect right it will get rupture that means so only so uh, in uh, so many exam it question has been asked that epidural hemorrhage in case of epidural hemorrhage which artery will affect middle meningeal artery will affect and it is the arterial hemorrhage right now one thing here this is the here i should show in blue that this this is what is this this is called the dural venous sinus dural venous sinus right here is the arachnoid villi so this this is the pyramid this is arachnoid so this area is called the this area sub arachnoid space this this is sub arachnoid space sub arachnoid space right here is the csf is here so i am drawing with red color red color okay csf this is the csf here and what i told you here is the dural venous sinus so csf from arachnoid villi from arachnoid villi this is the arachnoid villi right yes from arachnoid villi it's enter into the dural venous sinus dural venous sinus and it getting absorbed there so this is the sub arachnoid space and tell me this is the for, uh, this is the meningeal layer and this is the this is the meningeal layer one and this is the layer of the dura so that is called endosteel layer of the dura so this space this space is what sub sub dural space right so this is the sub dural space below the dura sub dural this is the epidural means epidural means outside or you can tell epidural space no so outside the dura that is called epidural space right so here is the sub dural space is here so what i am actually want to tell you that uh, here is some vein veins present and that is called bridging vein so in case of subdural hemorrhage this is the epidural hemorrhage artery is affected in subdural hemorrhage
and is which structure going to affect that is the bridging vein right so in the this is the epidural now sub dural in the sub dural hemorrhage what will happen bridging vein will be affected bridging vein okay so this is the venous here is the which in the epidural there is artery affecting so arterial but here is the veins is affecting so it is venous right so this both things should be very clear in your mind that in the epidural hemorrhage is what happening middle meningeal artery is getting damaged so there is the hemorrhage due to the middle meningeal artery so this is arterial hemorrhage in the sub dural hemorrhage what happening there is the bridging veins right so that is going to affect so it is a venous type of hemorrhage and the bridging vein is the affecting okay this thing should come in your mind so now see here here is the sub here is the subarachnoid distress here is the subarachnoid distress this is subarachnoid distress from here csf will enter into the dural venous sinus through this arachnoid villi so what do you know about arachnoid villi arachnoid villi is a site okay where this csf is getting absorbed we know there is only 150 ml csf but daily production is the 500 to 600 ml right daily production so it should get absorbed in the dural venous sinus so this thing should be in your mind now i want to tell you one thing that is this arachnoid villi and here is the dural venous sinus so venous blood is here okay in this area there is the blood so what is the mechanism how it get absorbing so in what happening uh here i want to write okay so what happening csf csf pressure pressure should be greater than venous pressure venous pressure we know if there is csf pressure is high then venous pressure then it will enter into the here right yes what will happen if csf pressures if venous pressure is greater than csf pressure so this whole blood from this space dural venous sinus blood it will enter in to the subarachnoid space into the subarachnoid space through this arachnoid villi but it never happen okay it will never happen why because this arachnoid villi act as a wall this is act as a wall wall which give only permission to the csf to end, enter into this dural venous sinus it prevent venous blood from the this dural venous sinus to the subarachnoid space okay so this is the act as a wall right so this is the mechanism and everything okay now clinical aspect you tell me one thing in the clinical aspect i told you third ventricle is communicate with the fourth ventricle right third ventricle is communicated with the fourth ventricle for so so csf from here csf from here it will enter into the fourth ventricle you are agree with me right here is the cerebral aqueduct what will happen if there is stenosis will occur stenosis this stenosis occurs right so in case of cerebral aqueduct stenosis what will happen tell me tell me i want to remove this okay so tell me first thing is the if there is problem in the cerebral aqueduct if there is stenosis first thing is the clinical clinical first thing cerebral aqueduct stenosis if there is stenosis okay csf from third ventricle it cannot enter into the fourth ventricle am i right so what will happen accumulation will be occurs accumulation of csf in the third ventricle so what will happen third ventricle will enlarge right that is called cerebral aqueduct stenosis what happen csf accumulation csf accumulation in a third ventricle so this will be enlarge enlarge right now second thing is 
if there is any atresia atresia of see here third ventricle i remove the diagram third ventricle is uh, third uh, ventricle so csf from the sorry csf from the fourth ventricle it enter into the subarachnoid space through this medial apertures and the lateral apertures m is mesenteric and the lateral there is foramen of fusca if there is atresia second clinical aspect there is the atresia of atresia of mesenteric and fusca right foramen of the mesenteric and fusca what will happen csf will accumulate in this fourth ventricle okay so csf will accumulate in the fourth ventricle accumulation in fourth ventricle right yes this cerebral aqueduct stenosis is the most common cause for most common cause for uh, not meningocele sense for hydrocele most common cause for for hydrocele hydrocele okay i want to tell you what is the hydrocele hydrocele means accumulation of fluid inside the ventricle first of all what is the ventricles we are telling ventricle ventricle is nothing it is the space okay i will tell i will teach you ventricles okay lateral ventricle third ventricle fourth ventricle everything so hydrocele hydrocele is the two type one is the inner and one is the outer what do you mean by inner and outer inner means sir, there is problem in the this circulation flow from the lateral ventricle into the third ventricle or third to fourth ventricle okay maybe this pathway get blocked okay or due to granulations or anything right so that is called inner and outer means sir, there is no problem in this a lateral ventricle third ventricle and fourth ventricle okay after fourth ventricle there is some problem in sub arachnoid space okay that is called outer so how present how a child with hydrocele will present there is accumulation of the fluid in the brain so what will happen this skull is the large okay so very enlarged skulls and this skull skull is the very thin and vents in this skull okay it the uh, skull it's very prominent okay and other one uh, this frontal part will be enlarged okay so this is all are the features of this hydrocele so cerebral aqueduct stenosis you have to remember okay so third ventricle will enlarge and the fourth ventricle will enlarge that condition is called atresia of the mesenteric and the fusca right so this is the all things you have to know about cerebro spinal fluid okay i hope you got it everything okay in next video we will start the ventricles or spinal cord and everything we will start okay so thank you